Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Wonder Series Wednesday. I'm Denise Stegall. I am the CEO and curator at Living Healthy List, and I'm also your host for the Wonder Series. So what the heck is the Wonder Series? The Wonder Series is a weekly forum right here on Living Healthy List Facebook page where you can get the answers to the questions that you've been thinking about but really haven't had the oomph to actually ask. So that's our goal here at uh, Living Healthy List and Wonder Series is really to give you the honest, reliable, and unbiased information from experts you can trust. And I'm really excited. I have my friend Lori Bryant Woolridge here today. Lori is a certified life uh, and spiritual coach. She is an author, an angel scribe, and the founder of Soul Innovations Coaching. Lori is also one of the coolest people I have ever met. So you're going to have a blast listening to our conversation today. Hi, Lori. Hi, Denise. Thank you. You know, cool knows cool. So that like energy thing. So absolutely. We, we, li we like cool at this stage in life. Cool is good. Cool is everything. <laughs> So one of the things that we like to do uh, with the Wonder Series is each month we have a, a bit of a theme. And so for February, our theme is, are you an SOB? And of course, when I first said that, I did not think of the actual thing other people think of. I thought SOB meant successful, open-minded, and brave. It works. Absolutely. So, you know, in this day and age, you know, things have been pretty crazy for the past year, and it looks like the next few months are going to be um, kind of the same. So how do we, how do we work on that? Um, before we go there, let's, let's talk a little bit about what you do and how you work with your clients and how uh, our audience can, you know, tap into your genius. Oh, well, thank you for that. Uh, now you've set that bar so high, I have to sound... <laughs> Sounds smarter than I feel today. So I am um, a spiritual life coach and all the other things that you said, but mainly I am an intuitive love coach. And I like to call myself a love connoisseur, um, which kind of sort of sounds fancy, but it's really about having a certain expertise. And the expertise that I've gotten um, comes from just a lifetime of being curious about love and studying it, writing about it you know, talking about it, teaching and coaching about it. And what I find it's interesting because no matter what your concern is when you come to coaching, it literally always comes down to love, always comes down to love and generally pointed in the mirror of self-love. So every problem that anybody is dealing with, any fears and concerns and doubts and confusion, we, when uh, we bring it back to me and what, what, well, me, not me, but me, you. <laughs> me, and, me, and me, you guys. <laughs> exactly. And where is, um, where's the deficit? Where's the gap in the way you love yourself? So it's a really interesting place to start when to deal with certain uh, issues and concerns because it's, Self is the place that people look last for their, um, you know, for their the solutions. And love, when attached to self, is also kind of low at the bottom of the list of remedies. So no matter what the issue, love is the answer. And mm -hmm. so that's what, uh, how I work with my clients. Um, so it's all good. All of a sudden, I've got a Beatles song in my head. Love is all you need. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe they had something. They knew something, and they've been singing. They were singing about it, and uh, I guess we didn't all pick that up. Um, it's interesting that you say that, though. You know about love and self-love. Um, as a health and life coach, like I, my background is food and beverage. So the one thing people always want to talk to me about is losing weight, and it's never about losing weight. It's always about something more. And when you think of it, it really is, it really does come back to that loving yourself and, and really believing that you're worth the time, the effort, the energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always are trying to fix our behaviors and our actions and mm -hmm. our reactions, but that's really the least 
of it, you got to get down to the core of what the real issue is. So it's all good. It's all good. How do people do that though? I mean, it, it's one thing to say, you know, we, I'm going to be more in love with myself. How do I do that? You know, yeah. what is, what does that even mean? I guess. Exactly. And when you think about it, right, people are like, <laughs> Self love, love myself. Well, no, duh. <laughs> like, I give myself I love love. myself, right? <laughs> and people, a lot of people confuse self care with self love. Mm. But I would say one of the first ways that you can begin to love yourself is to literally get to know yourself and what you want. And because people. You know, the lack of self-love is such a uh, vicious cycle. It just goes around. Mm -hmm. So everything that you're trying to prove that you're lovable and worthy and stuff to feel love of self, um, every time you fail, you begin to, it just says, yeah, you're not lovable, you know? And so it just feeds the misconceptions. And so the more mm -hmm. that you get to know yourself based on what you really want, not based on the boundaries and the expectations and the values that other people have put on you, the more you get to see yourself as self, true self. And most people who feel like failures are do so because they are trying, they have failed at being something that someone has wanted them to be, whether it's society or the religion or whatever. People don't fail at being themselves. So if you really want to love yourself, you got to know yourself and you think about it. You don't fall in love with just somebody without getting to know them and figure out what makes them interesting and tick and mm -hmm. you got to do the same for yourself. And that's where you have to begin. Why do you think at this stage in life, you know, we're, you know, in our forties and fifties and over, um, why is it just now that we're realizing that we actually need to love ourselves? Because from the cradle, we are taught to find love from outside. Mm -hmm. Every story, you know, from our families, but then every story we read, everything is talking about the search of for love, you know, mm -hmm. finding someone to love. We are raised to believe that our goal, our mission here is to be loved. And the real truth of it, when you get to the salami salami side of things, is that we are actually here to share love. I've and heard you say that before, but yeah. I'd, and I'd like to, for you to really expand on that. Yeah, so, so all of our relationships, the way we are guided and taught, but only taught through experience and, and example, not really taught with any sense of foundation of knowing. Right, all our experience mm -hmm. with love comes from the whoever taught us. Right, and it may have been a great lesson or it may have been a sucky lesson, but we don't, we don't, we just accept it as it is, and then we go about, you know, love sucks, love this, whatever. So the whole idea of love is all back to self. We are supposed to find the love for self, so that we become one with the divine. God, energy, whatever you call it. That's our soul mission. I know I'm going all woo-woo on you. No, hold I love on, it. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and the way we find self-love is through others. It literally takes a village for us to find love of self. But we do it the wrong way in thinking that we have, we want other people to love us. And then if they love us, right? Mm -hmm. Show me what is good about me so I can see it and love it too versus let me show you what's great about me mm -hmm. and you will love me or maybe you're not, but I'm gonna be okay anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and so relationships are our mirrors. Relationships are our laboratories to teach us who we are and so that we get to know each, ourselves so that we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. So every relationship, the relationship that I have with you mirrors back my, my beliefs, my judgments, my you know fears, all those things. And if we're watching and listening and taking in all that, then we begin to define ourselves in a way that, wow, I really, I like myself. I love myself. So relationships are for us to go out and share and find out more about ourselves. And in the sharing of love, you always get it back. 
because mm -hmm. the way it's set up, the law of attraction says like energy attracts like energy. So as you share, you will get back mm -hmm. the same quality that you share. That piece is important. Yes. So this is a little off topic, but like, you know, past relationships, you know, that, you know, that were not successful or failed relationships. Realistically, then those were really just learning experiences. Yeah. So I coach a lot of women because they're looking for the big love. Mm -hmm. I coach a lot of successful women that are um, killing it in all kinds of different areas, other areas, except for their loving relationships. Mm. And they have this trail of failed relationships. The only reason a relationship is failed is because you didn't mind from it the lesson about yourself. And so we tend to end our relationships. And when we end our relationships, those are the ones we walk away with. I'm not doing this anymore. Men's mm -hmm. da -da -da -da. There's a lot of anger and regret and confusion and self-loathing and all that kind of stuff. Those are when relationships are ended. And generally relationships that end, you pack up your baggage, you say to yourself, okay, this he wanted somebody who was this, this, and this. I'm going to be more this. I'm going to do it. We try to fix ourselves. We take all our baggage into the next relationship, and it's just over and over. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. Well, if a relationship is complete, that means every relationship is about the lesson. And when the lesson is over, the relationship is complete. And so now I've learned this about myself that enabling is not the same as loving and being generous mm -hmm. enabling is a way that i deny what i deserve or whatever i learned that he did all of this but i enabled that behavior that's the lesson i need to do in the next i just know what i want say what i want mm -hmm. put the boundaries around me not to keep people out but to respect my what i know whatever mm -hmm. the relationship is complete and as you learn the lessons and fill your gaps and love yourself more then because the law of attraction the big love is when it is just literally supposed to be celebrating love and learning the lessons and the joys of love not all the lessons of you but with every time you grow the relationships are stronger and better because you're attracting more of the same mm -hmm. positive quality so to speak um so yeah that's how you get to the big love by learning from the stepping stone lessons. Um, I, I really wish that we would teach our children that when they're young, because so many, so many people feel when they're in their, their twenties and thirties, if they're not married, that they're broken, that there's something wrong with them. And it really, I mean, it, and this is kind of goes into, you know, our topic, it's so closed minded yeah. and you know, you can only, you can be, you can only be so successful when you're closed-minded when it comes to your own life. Right. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's true. And open-mindedness is our huge um, indicator of self-love because the more you love yourself, the less you judge yourself, mm -hmm. the less you judge yourself, the less you judge others. So you are much more open to the idea that everybody's got to find their own path. Everybody's learning their own lessons. Everybody's coming into it their own way, their own mindset, because everybody's reality is different. And so, yeah, things like being open-minded are a great indicator of how much you love yourself. Mm -hmm. See, it all comes back to love. It all comes back to love. <laughs> And I always, it always comes back to love, even with what I, what I say all the time with living healthy list, eat real food, be, make good decisions and be accountable. It does. It always comes back to love because it's all about you and who you are and what you want out of life. Yes. Yes. And how you treat yourself. How do you define your, your own worth for yourself? So with food, is that eating stuff that's going to make this vehicle that you're having this old experience and healthy and take you far or you know, are you going to abuse it? So it always comes down to self-love. So we all need to learn how to love ourselves and really to know each know ourselves. I think that's a that's a really good key point that you make is to know yourself and what you want. How do we do that? Like, how do we find that out? I mean, is it literally, you know, we go on a retreat walking in the woods or, you know, what are your recommendations um, for people who come to you like, and are just lost. 
Yeah. So the first thing is breathe, just chill. Just, you know, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. The other thing is I, my slogan, my motto for my coaching business is true masters learn through joy. And we literally believe that hype, that no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. That the big lessons have to be through pain and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to. One of the first things I give every client that walks the, well, they never walk through the door because I never see anybody. <laughs> Not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, is to be homework, to begin to get in touch with and live through their five senses. Mm. And the reason I do this is twofold. One, because immediately you raise your happiness quotient because if you literally step outside and are in that moment, you're not thinking about the past, you're not thinking about the worries of the future, you can't take in that air and see the sky and all that stuff and not feel appreciative and grateful, hmm. even in COVID land, right? Yep. And, and even when it's minus two? It, even when it's minus two. <laughs> Because the contrast always gives you something amazing to say. But the other thing that living through your five senses done, through your sensory preferences, you learn a lot about who you are authentically, what you like, what you want, what makes you happy, whether it's through food, whether it's through smell, what, what you like to taste, music you like to listen to, that will give you clues as to who you really are without even noticing it. Things that you are attracted to just automatically will give you a lot of clues about what you think, what you feel, what you think. And if, especially if you assign a value to them, and I, I don't mean like best, better, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. like my personal icon is the sun. I used to always, the sun, every time there was something that had a sun on it, I wanted it. You know, and my very first business card that I made for myself had a sun on it. Soul. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, the name of your business is right yeah, behind you yeah. with the little sun in the, in the O. Yeah. So assigning, <laughs> what does the sun mean to you? You know what? Warmth. Light. Having the warmth and being big enough to allow people to bask under my warmth. Always creating my sunshine. So when you think about what is the fact that I'm always attracted to this certain flower or this certain thing, what does it mean to me? And you begin, see, we don't interview ourselves. We don't. So if you just start with your five senses, no pressure. Mm -hmm. What do I like? You and, but you connect with it and mindfully, right? Mm -hmm. You can begin the process of, of defining. And it's so important to define what you want because if you do not define what you want, you never are making choices. You are always settling. Mm. And that's another reason why we have a lot of self-doubt because we don't know what we want. So there's this and there's this and there's that. And so the other, another quick thing you can do is begin by making simple decisions. Mm -hmm. How many times, where, where do you want to go to eat? Oh, I don't care. I don't know. I have a friend who I went to college with and for years, whatever we were doing, what do you want to do? I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Um, where do you want to, you know, what are you in the mood for to eat? Nah, I don't care. And it got to the point where it was like, please just make the decision. Right. And can you see how a, that impacts a relationship, just your relationship mm -hmm. at some place. It's like, make a decision. I mean, come on, let's have some skin in the game. Do you care mm -hmm. or not? Are you, you know, um, but then also, the, if you don't make decisions, you don't express yourself mm -hmm. when it comes down to things that you do want or treatment you don't want to accept, you, you put up with it, you settle for it. You, so, mm -hmm. and that again, indicator of how much worth you see in yourself, how much love that you see for self. So the way we act uh, and react often, it's clues to where we stand. And we just need to get um, busy recognizing the stuff that we do. I think what's what's amazing though too is this isn't something that you can you know you're not too and you're never too old to learn more about yourself and to love yourself more and really to really in order to live that life that you've always dreamed of, whether you're in your twenties or thirties or forties or fifties yeah. or eighties. Um, I think 
learning to love yourself and understanding more yeah. who you are. And wanting things, um, and not necessarily material things, doesn't make you selfish. It makes you self-aware. And what it's really kind of to go back to the topic that we, <laughs> we were talking about, how in this crazy time, mm -hmm. do we make progress? Do we do things? Do we define anything when there is nothing ahead of us that looks defined? We don't even know when we get to go out of the house and have dinner with a friend, let alone hug your parents or kids or whatever. And so one of the things that I tell people to, and this is a great way to help you define um, certain things, especially when you have kind of big decisions you want to make, but just have no sense of whatever. Mm -hmm. We are um, a culture that is used to telling people to set goals. Yeah. <laughs> set a goal for yourself. If you don't know what you want, you cannot set a goal. And a lot of times then goals become punitive. I set a goal. I didn't make it <laughs> horrible. I can't do it. And it just keeps the lie going that I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not deserving enough. So in times like this, when everything is up in the air and we want to feel like we're making forward progress, I tell people set a direction. Don't set a goal. I love that. Oh, yeah. Set a direction base. And if you don't even know, Let's say you're trying to make a career change because people are losing their jobs, things, you know, what do I want to do? I don't know, but I'm going to set a direction. Well, what direction am I going? <laughs> Start with what you love. Mm -hmm. What do I love? And the next question you want to ask, well, what do you love is why do I love it? Do not, this is what I love. I love knitting. I would love to have a yarn shop. I love the idea of a cozy, you know, people come in and they knit and they're creative and da, da, da. But, you know, nobody's going to do that. And then how are we going to make money on that? And no, is COVID. And you talk yourself out, out, of, out of it before you even get started. So mm -hmm. I love to knit. And I love like the clothy clatch, you know, um, scenario. That's what I know. Why? because you're creating in, you know, you're making something out of nothing. The whole idea of knitting is like, you can take an old sweater and you can unravel it and then make it something brand new that fits. Why, why, why? And the why motivates you. The why keeps you inspired. Mm -hmm. And then you've set a direction. I don't know what it is, but I wanted something to do with knitting. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it, you don't have to know. And when you set yourself off in the direction, it is a, um, a mission to collect information. So like you said, you got to be open-minded because as you go down the journey, things will come mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, wow, I never thought of it. I could literally do knitting and create the patterns that did it. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. And you get ideas and suddenly your, the hows start appearing. And then the next thing you know, you, oh, I, now I want to do set, I want to open up a knit shop, but I can't do it, you know, brick and mortar. So I'm going to do it virtually. Mm -hmm. And I have, I'm sourcing the, you know, I met this person over here when I was at that thing and they source, you know, organically dyed yarn. And so all of a sudden your vision starts becoming clear but you're always moving forward in the direction. The direction. Of, please, thank you, Eleanor. <laughs> you know, always moving forward in the direction of your dreams. So when you set a direction instead of a goal, you are allowing yourself to be open to the possibilities. And what's driving you is the why. I remember in one of the very first coaching courses that I took, the question was, or the, the, the person had said, okay, ask why five times. And those five whys will get you to at that, for that particular thing, it was an answer mm -hmm. for, for our purpose. It's a direction. Right. But here's a, here. So to tap into a little bit more to get to that next level. So we're open-minded and we're getting some of this um, feedback and these interesting things. And, and, and I know this for sure. Like when I put things out there, people show up in my life. Um, 
That's it's amazing. The law, that's the law of attraction. The law of attraction. <laughs> But then here's that last piece, you know, being successful, you know, we want to be successful. And that comes into back to love, being open-minded again Mm -hmm. to love that last piece about being brave. Mm -hmm. How do we tie that into, we have these, we now have a direction. We know what we're, why we like to do what we want to do, but do we take, do we take the plunge or do we hold back? Like what, what holds us back there? And is it bravery or is it just, you know, something my mom would say would be gumption? Yeah. So think about this. When you really want something, when you really know something, you have all the faith in the world that it's going to happen. And the bravery that is um, needed is the bravery required to set the boundaries around your dream and your goal and what you need to know. And as the hows become available because of the law of attraction, um, you get just more and more validation that this is what I'm supposed to do. But here's one thing that people leave out and, and get confused about. I know I'm gonna start this knitting show, I got it. And yeah, now it's become not a, a, a thing, but a show. <laughs> Ladies who knit and talk about, you know, whatever. They talk about patterns. Right, exactly. Talk about hot flashes, whatever it is. (laughs) We talk Um, about that anyway. (laughs) I believe that that could be good. I believe that that could be a real strength. So you go into this, I believing that I could be good. And then you start having a little doubt, right? Maybe, I don't know, maybe it shouldn't be talking about stuff. Maybe it should be. And we get really, we talk ourselves out of what we believe because of the doubt. But what people don't understand is that belief and doubt go together like hand in glove. Doubt is supposed to accompany belief down that path in the direction you are headed because it is the doubt that helps you hone the beliefs into something that you know. Mm -hmm. So if you are strong and you're open-minded and you know you're wise, as the doubt comes in, you can pick them off. Oh, wow, you know what? I I think I'm changing my mind on that. That was a good doubt. Oh, no, I I know it's gotta be knitting. I know it's gotta be organic yarn. Mm -hmm. So the, the doubt is a gift. The doubt is helping you hone to what you know. And then when you get to know what you know, That's where faith comes in. And that's where the bravery comes in to stand your ground, to say, no, I know this is going to work. No. You know, when my first book uh, was, it took me six years to write it. And I had no idea how it was going to get published or whatever. And people would say, do you, um, so if you don't publish it, are you going to publish it yourself? And it never occurred to me it wouldn't get published. When they asked me that question, I was like, because I had honed things to the point where it was um, annoying. And then one day in my son's soccer game, I'm sitting to this woman next, and we start talking, oh, what do you do? And I admitted it out loud, I'm writing a novel. Oh, she happened to be an editor at Simon & Schuster. <laughs> so this <laughs> house, right? House mm-hmm. just show up. So yeah, set a direction work your doubts, trust your doubts, that they are helping you home to what you know, and then be brave in, in staying with your vision based on your whys. But the other, I wanted to add some S's, some O's and a B. Okay. <laughs> strong is absolutely. And what do you need to be strong about? You need to be strong. And this is who I am. This is what I want, mm-hmm. right? And so to be strong, you also need to be Mm. self-aware. So the self-awareness will help you hone things and develop things and drive things based on how you know you work, what you know you love, what you know you're capable of. Self-awareness is like the the foundation that strength is built on, Mm -hmm. right? Because if you're going to lead with your strengths, you got to know where they are. Yep. The other thing besides being open-minded is to be optimistic. Mm, I love it. Optimistic and positivity, optimism and positivity 
are key. They're part of that foundation of joy. And in within that foundation and built on that foundation is again, motivation, inspiration, um, the will to understand, you know what? This is gonna happen, I can do this. And you know, I'm gonna have some struggles and I'm gonna have some hiccups, but every hiccup, every struggle is either giving me contrast or a lesson that's helping me hone what I, to what I believe and to what I know. And the last, along with being brave, be benevolent. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, in, especially in this space mm -hmm. of COVID, of crazy, of, yeah. of out, out and out hatred, especially as women, yeah. we have to balance the masculine feminine energy. So every step we take every single day has to be one that is rooted in benevolence, compassion, mm -hmm. kindness, and love, of course. Love. Go back to love. <laughs> and love. But, <laughs> but with that, you are, you've turned an idea a business into a mission and a purpose, which are two totally different mm -hmm. things to inspire, to grow, to lead, to achieve. Wow. Those last few words that you just said were just really powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think you always give us such amazing things to think about because we're always so worried about the outside world and what's going on. And I really love that you bring it, you bring it home, you bring it here, you bring it here. Yeah. And I think our audience really, um, We'll take a lot from this um, because I think especially nowadays, you know, we're so focused on everybody else and everything else um, that it's time to bring yeah. it back and think of ourselves and love, love ourselves because if we can love ourselves, we can love each other. Absolutely. Light and love is contagious, mm -hmm. but it's got to start here. Yeah. So, you know, as we're, <laughs> we're so worried about being contagious. <laughs> let's let's flip the switch always right let's find the positive <laughs> yep let's you know infect people with something that's going to really help and heal mm -hmm. in a real way that even the vaccination is not going a vaccination mm -hmm. isn't going to i think that's a very good point so with that uh laurie thank you so much for for this amazing conversation it's always a pleasure um, to our audience, um, if you'd like to get in touch with Lori, um, I'll make sure that we have her information in the chat. Um, Lori, any last bits, um, information you want to share, anything uh, free information that you have on your website or anything that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, um, coming up in the next few, I think next month, um, I'm going to have a course on the Living Healthy list mm -hmm. called No Love. And it's actually a little primer on um, next level insights um, on love. So just love in general, um, why we fear love, self love, and then how to be love and share love. So that's, that's exciting. So look for that. And um, I just want everybody to know that you are love, you are loved, and so therefore act like you know it. And that's, that's it. <laughs> well, thank you. I think we all needed that. Um, thank you everybody for joining us and uh, any questions or comments, please leave those in the, uh, the chat in, uh, on Facebook, or you can connect with us through uh, livinghealthylist.com. And I will be here with you next Wednesday for another edition of the Wonder Series. And until then, healthy living, happy life. <laughs>